of opportunities to talk with students that are already in like their pre-service education programs, um, but very rarely do I actually get to talk um, with tutors. And part of my history is that I kind of grew up academically in a writing center, and um, that pedagogy really infuses what I do in my classroom with pre-service teachers and also with in-service teachers, and so it's nice to kind of get back to my roots today, and I really appreciate it. So we're going to start first things first, and I just want to know, and this, this is not to call anybody out or make you feel like a Luddite or anything like that, but when, when you look at this screen here, how many of you know what that little thing is down in the corner? Okay. All right. For those of you that just raised your hand, uh, turn to somebody right next to you that didn't raise their hand and, and explain it to them really quickly, because part of what we're going to learn about today is that we are all smarter together. Okay, so take just a moment to tell them what it is and maybe help them download it. <laughs> All right, yes. Can't log into the Wi Fi? Oh. This would be the man that would need to help you with that. All right, so you turned and talked. So now somebody who didn't know what that was 30 seconds ago, what is it? <laughs> yeah, up here in the back. <laughs> yeah, you can download an app on your smartphone and hold it up there and scan it. And what's really great when I do this at some conferences, like you just see people like sitting there like that, trying to get the right thing going in. It's called a QR code, and I'll admit, I don't even know what QR stands for. <laughs> Quick read, thank you very much. Um, but what I, what I wanna do is say that, um, wow, isn't that great? We can walk in, we can scan a QR code, and you can go to Troy's website, wow, isn't that cool? And he's got a little label, and you can scan it there too. That's all exciting and neat and wonderful, and it's a great little technology tool, but what matters really is that you're able to do something with it, and that we use it in a way that we communicate with one another and that we communicate with students that makes a difference. So if you've already scanned that, and if you haven't scanned it, and you have a Wi-Fi device or whatever you've brought today, this is the time for you to actually take it out of your pocket and use it and go to the URL that's on my um, label there, or you should have um, gone right to that wiki page. And what you'll see when you go there is something that looks kind of like this. And if you go right over here onto the left-hand side, click on JCC 2012, and you will be able to follow along with my presentation. Now, what's cool about this, besides the fact that I haven't used a lot of paper, and even though I might have reduced my carbon footprint by not using a lot of paper, all the electrons being spent right now are probably uh, causing an imbalance in the electricity grid, but that's what it is. Um, I've created a wiki, and depending on where we go with this presentation and how this works, um, we might be creating and adding to a wiki as well. But a wiki is a website that anybody can edit, a la Wikipedia which for some librarians and English teachers, that really freaks us out. Um, for others, that's pretty cool, that we can all go in and contribute and add and make things. And so you'll see that I put my slides up there, I've got links, all those kinds of things. So now you are gonna be participating, and I'm gonna be showing you some things on my iPad as well, and honestly, I have no idea what you're gonna be doing, okay? That's one of the unsettling things as a teacher. You might be doing something like this, <laughs> or you might be doing something like Facebook, or you might be doing something completely out of the ordinary. I have no idea what you're doing. And we, we lose a little bit of control as a teacher or as a tutor when someone has a screen and they are literally mediating their world by seeing through that screen. It's not quite Google Goggles yet for everybody. But the idea is that we don't know what's going on. So how are we going to use these tools in smart, productive, thoughtful, interesting ways? And that's what I'd like to talk about today. So I'm going to jump back into my presentation here and uh, kind of tell you a little bit about me, like Steve promised. So, go back over here. All right. So first of all, this uh, is not a self-portrait. <laughs> this is one that my children made of me um, using a little Wii application, Nintendo something or other. Um, I think it's always really important to see how our children and our students see us 
And so that's why I like that uh, self-portrait. Uh, at least she gave me a lot of hair, my daughter, and I'm still doing good there. But yeah, I'm a former writing center tutor. I am a professor of English. Why is an English guy talking about technology? Well, many of my colleagues at CMU kind of ask me the same question all the time. I don't fix printers. I don't help them correct their emails. What I do try to do is say that we can use technology in smart ways to improve literacy. And so my, my focus is on writing, but I hope I'm going to offer everybody something today because I know there are a lot of math and science and other subject areas here. I'm also the director of a writing project, and believe it or not, yes, I have a blended family of six. So Brady Bunch jokes are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I want to say a few things, and then we're going to get active. First thing I want to say, and I am going to read this right off the screen because I do want you to kind of turn and talk and think about this. Um, this is a quote from an article that uh, I recently co-authored here, and I'd like you just to find a word or a phrase or something, because again, you are going to turn and talk in just a moment about it. The fact that we, and our students, are now able to hold a device in our pockets that allows us to read and annotate an original text, stream on demand multiple film adaptations of that text, look at the spark notes about the text, ooh, and find essays from the text on an online paper mill, hmm, all at the flick of a finger is significant. Well, there are productive things and not productive things. Talk about that for just a moment, again, with someone right next to you. What, what's good about this? What's bad about this? <laughs> site right now, we'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute, it's called typewith.me, so type with me, and I like it because for iPads, Google Docs doesn't always cooperate very nicely, and so this one actually does. So I'm just going to type in jccconf, or what are we calling it, Steve, jccconf2012? Sure, that works. I think that's what, I think that's what you've been calling things. And now I have this nice little word processor, so let's hear from you for about three or four minutes here, let's just hear a couple pros, a couple cons. Why does it feel significant that we now have these things um, in our hands and are able to use them in really interesting ways or very maybe non-productive ways sometimes? So what did you talk about? Right here in the middle. The fact that somebody like me that has what I like to call a dumb phone <laughs> uh, can't do any of that stuff. <laughs> okay. So there are still those of us who have limited access, right? Okay. So I'm going to put that in there. Sorry, I'm trying to delete all this extra text. All right. There was another. You know, let's just stick over here for a moment, right next to you. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that I I ask my students in the first day or two of class each semester. Most of them have cell phones. Very few of them have texting plans. And most of them do not have any access. They can't afford it. Okay. The high school kids that come to our campus, they all have smartphones. They're all on them all the time. But the older non-traditional students, they don't have any of this technology. Okay, so non-traditional students sometimes don't have the same access as maybe our younger students. Yes, behind you guys. Yep. Yes, and Spartans. You have a dumb phone like I do and can only call and text. Can you please raise your hand? I want to see. <laughs> and I don't even text. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. 
worry. We'll figure something out for you guys too. I've got a, I've got a backup plan. Over here. All right. So I think a pro is that um, you know I have a smartphone and I have access to everything so quickly, and so I don't have to look for a computer, log on to a computer. I just have it right there. So. All right. So it's quick. All right. Um, right here in the green sweater. You had your hand up a moment ago. Just that I do all my research online now. I don't, even though I exist in the library, and the, our, our office is in the library, I don't go to, to the paper stacks anymore. And I used to, I really like doing the paper stack stuff, but it's just so much easier to go online. And what I really like about it is that for everything you look up, there's also like 20 more thousand threads you can click on, and mm -hmm. it takes you all over the place. So access, access provides other opportunities. Okay, right next to you, yeah. Um, I think a con of it is that like people coming in that have to do research have no idea how to use a library. <laughs> okay, so the question is how are we going to help them, right? All right, way up in the back, I saw a hand kind of, yes. Yeah, well, kind of piggybacking off that, they break dependency on the device itself. Yeah. Kind of like how the calculator is kind of taking away basic math. Okay, so you feel like there's a dependence on the device? All right, all right, over here, right in the middle. Um, I was gonna say from a nursing perspective, I would kind of be lost without this because if I don't know a specific drug that a patient is on or if I don't know enough specifics about the disease, I just go to Medscape on my phone or I just look at the Rx on my phone instead. Okay, and right down the row and then we'll come up front. Yep. I mean, with these devices, you have an instantaneous sharing of ideas. So if a problem arises, you can pose a question to millions of people mm -hmm. and get answers from all different walks of life. Okay. So this instant sharing can be good, can be bad in some cases. All right, one more comment right up here and then we'll move forward. It, well, it demonstrates multiple literacies. Mm -hmm. uh, there's all kinds of literacy. Everybody should be getting better at all of them. You, okay. should, know, you should know that there are uh, Sparks notes. You should also know there's original source text. Um, you should also know that there are films of these things available, that there are interpretations, and these are all different literacies. But the high school kids are right. It's here whether we like it or not. It's kind of like, you know, television. Yeah. <laughs> for better or for worse, right? Okay, so we kind of have pro on this side, con on this side. It's going to work out really well in the debate. We'll see where we're at. But it feels significant, right? Well, one of the arguments that we want to make in this is that, um, you know, it was really cool. We had this thing called the printing press, and then we had this thing called the radio and television and film strips and overhead projectors, and now we have Elmo's and all this stuff. And all those things were promised to change educational technology and make things significant. Well, smartphones feel significant, just like all of those other things felt significant. So I hear you, and I want to acknowledge the fact that they're only significant if we make them significant, and that's what I hope we're able to do, at least in part, today. So I want to tell you just a little bit about my beliefs as a tutor, and then we're going to start using some of these tools. First of all, I believe in collaboration. I believe that uh, as a tutor, I don't have all the answers. Okay? I have to listen carefully, I have to offer encouragement, I have to understand where students are at and be able to be receptive to those ideas and what they need. Um, also, at the same time, and this is one of those kind of core philosophies about writing-centered pedagogy that we used to have long arguments about, like, how direct should you be? Should you tell that student, yes, you must have a comma there, or you absolutely need to do this? I do think there are times for directness. And so if you know something and you have an idea, I think it's okay to share it. So I, I come with it from that perspective too. And of course, then also kind of moving beyond the individual student, um, or beyond the individual assignment, pardon me, and thinking about what that student needs. Um, it may not be about getting an A on that particular assignment. It may be about instilling some long-term beliefs. And so I understand that we look at this technology and it can be fickle and we don't know what students are using it for and they go to the library, they don't know what's going on. So it's not just about teaching them how to write that first paper for freshman composition. It's about teaching them how to be critical, thoughtful inquirers and going to the library with a purpose and understanding the tools. All right, so here's a tool we're going to use. 
Um, and I anticipated that many of us would have dumb phones, um, but I'm hoping that most of you have at least some kind of phone, and if you don't, you can also participate online as well. Um, this is a screenshot of a, a program or a website called Celly. So C E L dot L Y. And what I'm going to ask you to do right now um, is compose a text message. So uh, take out your phone. This is the moment where you're allowed to take the phone out of your pocket. And I invite you to actually do this. You go ahead. Um, now, depending on the type of phone you have, um, a lot of you probably get text messages and you're not quite sure, how do I actually initiate a two new text message? I admit I even had that problem at first. Um, so you might need to turn, and this is a time where you can partner, but you're going to text this, at jcc2012conf to 23559. All right, now one thing I will tell you is that this is going to generate a lot of text. So if you are on a limited text messaging plan, I can change the settings in here. I have that right as the instructor, but I've left it open for the moment. So go ahead, send a text to JCC 20, at JCC 2012 comp 23559. Go ahead and do that right now. Help somebody right next to you if you have questions. here in just a moment is that we should start seeing some messages show up. Now the cool thing is that we are able, or I am able as instructor, to kind of see what's going on here. And I'm able to see what's going on. Oh, Lana didn't quite get in on time. Right. So I'm going to wait. We're going to see. We're going to have people kind of join. In a minute, I'm going to be able to initiate a poll. Now, some of you have probably heard of another um, software, or I keep saying software, website called Poll Everywhere. Um, you can do that pretty simply too and initiate a poll. I like Selly because it actually allows you to create a group and you're able to keep that group and communicate with that group. Now, I can feel my, my pocket buzzing here and uh, I can see stuff coming up on screen. What I'm going to do is just let this kind of run in the background, get back to our regularly scheduled presentation. Um, I'm going to show you some other apps and some things that I think you'll be able to do um, to help you and your students be more productive. Then we're going to come back to Selly and we're going to talk and I'll probably take a poll and we'll, we'll chat and we'll look at those pros and cons again. So um, here we go. Let me jump back to here. I will um, go ahead and send you a link if you want to pull this up. This is kind of neat. You can say, hey everybody, here is today's um, keynote page, and you can send out links, you can send out all kinds of stuff. So there we go. Those of you who are on board, you'll get that. All right, so a few things. Being that we're at a tutoring conference, I thought we'd go back to basics and talk about the ABC DEs of smarter tutoring. I want to just quickly, and I know I'm breezing through these, and I'll be around later this morning to talk and at lunch if people want to have a little kind of hack jam play session with their phones and do any of these things. But I want to talk to you about some academic skills and some tools to support them. Okay, so we're going to talk about annotating, building, connecting, discovering, and explaining. And we're going to look at these tools over here. Now again, um, feel free to take notes if you'd like, because I know that some people learn that way and that makes a lot of sense. But also know that links to all of this stuff are available on the wiki page. So you can go back to it later, click on things, you'll be able to figure it out um, from there as well. So let me kind of give you an overview and then we'll see what we're interested in. We'll try, we'll, we'll work with Selly and we'll imagine what kinds of assignments and things we might do. So the first thing that I, I encourage you to do is that you have a phone that um, has some interesting tools. And even for those of you who don't have smartphones, you have some of these tools. And things like voice recorders, there are, there are services like Cinch or Gcast where you can call in and you can record things and save them online. And that's pretty cool because then you have something that's online. You can send a link out to it later as a text, as a tweet, as an email message. 
So you could record lectures in class, you could record your tutoring session for your client, you could send it back uh, to them. Those things are awesome. Cameras, Steve and I kind of joke about how interesting it is that you know we have cameras on our phones, even the not smartphones. Notes are on the board, snap a picture. Now some of the programs I'm going to show you here in a few minutes will help you annotate and elaborate on those pictures, but those are nice as well. Um, iTunes U, I just put up there as a free resource. Um, many of you probably already know about it. Lectures on everything from people all over the world. Um, and of course you have maps that you can use and think about geotagging and doing things like that. So remember, we have some pretty cool apps. We just have to think about how to use them in smart ways. So let's get on to the ABCs. So A, annotate. We want to think about how we can get our students and ourselves to be smarter about the text we find and read, right? Because we, let's face it, we get on the web, we click, we skim, we click, we skim, we're doo 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 doo. You go through 10 web pages and you don't even know where you've been. Does that happen to anybody else? It should, I, I know it happens to me. Well, annotating is kind of nice because what we can do is use a program to save and capture and say, what is it that we're reading? What is it that we're looking at? What do we want to say about this? <coughs> Two apps that I think are particularly useful and are free, and they work on Android, they work on iOS, they work on any web browser. Um, they're fully functional tools, however you want to use them. The first one is called Digo. And Digo is nice because what it does is it allows you to take um, you can install a little thing on your web browser and you can use it as a highlighter and you can also add sticky notes to any web pages. You can then together collaboratively with a group add comments to those pages. So it can literally become kind of like a discussion stream. So you as tutor or instructor can find a web page you want your students to read, you save it to your Deagle library, you could send it out as a link or they could just, just tell them to go to the Deagle library. They can then see your comments and your annotations and then continue on a discussion thread. So it's a really useful tool in that way. The other tool on this page is called Evernote, which has the elephant um, as the logo because of course elephants remember everything, it's their way that they think about it. Evernote is awesome because it allows you to take pictures, videos, voice recordings, you can annotate PDF files, all kinds of different stuff, and again, you can collaborate. You can access it on your phone, you can access it through a web browser. So whatever you want to do, wherever you want to go, um, you can use Evernote to uh, keep track of your, your digital annotations and share them in really productive ways. Again, I know I'm moving fast, there will be some time for questions and we'll figure out what tool we want to try. Second thing I want to share, <coughs> building. So first thing is that type with me, you saw me pull that off on my iPad. Again, it's super simple to start a document, share that link, people can collaborate. Note taking in class, um, building question sets or with a colleague or doing things like that, even putting up things and having people write responses to them outside of class, super easy. Um, don't even need an account with that, like, unlike Google Docs. Tumblr is a blogging service that allows you, as you can see from that picture right there, to post just about anything really quickly and easily, whether it's from your phone or on your computer. Text, photos, quotes, links, you can see I put a picture there of a Wordle in that particular post. But the idea is that you can just put things up there. You could set up a Tumblr for your class, and while you're either in class taking notes, because um, I know many of you are supplemental instructors and you're working in the classroom with your two Ts, you can continue to add this continuous stream of ideas and thoughts and things um, that can be available to them later. And then, of course, they can go in and comment as well. Another action, academic purpose, that we want to bring to these tasks is to connect. So two tools here. Dropbox is like having an online repository where you can add Word files, PDFs, PowerPoints, photos, audio clips, anything you want, then you can share it. You can either make it completely public so people can just come to them if they have the link, or you can um, set it up privately. So maybe you have smaller groups that you just want to give those particular documents, give access to those documents, you can do that that way. Um, this other tool, and I'll be honest, I haven't used it yet. When I was researching this week and trying to put the polishing touches on this presentation, 
I read about it and it got like four and a half stars. It's called In Class and the idea is that you can set up courses and it's got calendars and to-do lists and task assignments and put in contact information for instructors. I'm not quite sure if you can make those public, although my guess is being the kind of app that it is, you probably could. All right, so let's think of the next here. Discover. Now to go back to this idea about the library and the researching and where do we get our ideas and how do we figure all this stuff out, there are some really cool things that we can do now in terms of discovering information. These are three tools. One's Google Currents, one's called Flipboard, and the other one's called Zeet. And Zeet just came out on Android since I last put this presentation together, like in the last week or so, it came out on Android. Uh, Flipboard is an iOS, Currents works all over the place. Let me show you kind of how this works. What's really cool is that you can set up customized feeds of information and have them come to you. So here's my Flipboard here. And you can see that I'm getting feeds from some of my friends on Facebook. I'm getting um, information like Huffington Post comes up here, Wired, things like that. But this is literally like a magazine. Okay, and you can see my magazine updates every time I go to it. I'm able to log in and take a look at it. I have some personal stuff up here. I have some professional and some just interests and things like that. The other thing that's really cool is that I have Google Reader set up. Now, we can talk about that a little bit more in a minute. I don't want to get too far off the path, but Google Reader works by pulling in, like you know when you go to MLive or you go to CNN or something like that and the latest news kind of pops up at you? You can set it up so that you have a customized reading list and then you can pull those reading lists into these different apps. So, so for instance, I set up a, a thing for climate change. I was doing an example and I showed that. So I have that in there. I've got things from other friends. But the idea is that you can create your own customized, always constantly updated magazine slash newspaper. And what's nice again is that yeah, you know what? I can load my Facebook and my Twitter feed and my LinkedIn, so I'll, I can look and see what my friends are doing when I want to, but then I can also get back to business and research as well. So that is a little bit about Flipboard and some of those. So let me flip back over here. The last thing that I wanted to share real quick, and then I'm going to literally pull you and figure out what we're going to talk about for the end part of this keynote, is explanation. These are some really cool apps. Now these are iOS, actually both of them are iPad apps, but I'm sure there are some things on Android that I'm hoping will crowdsource and people will tell me. Um, screen Chomp and EduCreations are two um, screen capturing types of tools for um, the iOS devices. So let me load one of those up here and kind of show you how that works. So if I have EduCreations, let me get that pulled up. I am able to um, basically have my own whiteboard. So let's say, let's go to a website. Um, let's say that I'm going to be doing an explanation of, uh, what are we doing an explanation of this week in class? Uh, final exams? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing. All right. Do you have a particular smart website that might uh, show me something? Wolfram, all brother. All right. All right. So let's say Steve is pulling this up. Now he could do. He could have his own whiteboard with edu creations and whatnot. But I'm just going to take a screenshot of this, which is a cool tool as well. I just press the home button and the power button at the top and snapped a picture. Now I can go back to edu creations and I have this available through my photo stream. So I can choose from the library. And I've got this website. I've also got great pictures of my daughter playing with photo booth, as you saw there. <laughs> um, but I've got this here, and uh, here we go. So I want to record something. Um, what are you're going to say? Something really smart oh, no, about hypothesis testing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm in class today, and I'm going to pretend to say something really smart about hypothesis testing because I'm an English professor, and heaven knows that English professors know everything there is to know about hypothesis testing. <laughs> All right, so I saved my lesson, and I can call this, I will definitely call it test, because I don't even know what I'm doing. I'll say save, I'm gonna keep it private for right now, just so you can kind of see. Oh, it even knew it was math, how cool is that? I don't wanna log in at the moment. 
I save it, and now I have a little mini lesson on hypothesis testing. Now, you can't hear my volume because it's really soft up here, but you will see me start to circle that. My hands are not touching the screen, so you know this is plain. And then I X through, and so everything that I did on screen and recorded is now available as a screencast, which is really quite useful to share. There are already screencasts of all kinds of subject matter posted for different math, science, English, all kinds of stuff. Folks from K through 16 are already publishing stuff. All right, so here, here are some questions. We're gonna we're gonna do a, what was that one? That one was called Edu Creations. All right, so we are going to literally take a poll. This is going to be audience participation time. We're gonna do Sally here in just a minute, and I want you to think about what seems interesting to you. What can you annotate? What can we build? How can we connect? What can you discover? What can you explain? What do we want to do with our time here? So again, I'm gonna offer you a moment to turn and talk. We're gonna kind of take the top three or four vote getters, then we're gonna do a poll on Selly right here in live time, and then we'll talk a little bit more about one of those things. So go ahead, talk to your neighbor again for about two minutes, figure out what was interesting, what was compelling, what do you have a question about, what do you wanna spend? Our time together on, and then we'll we'll compile that together. <laughs> screens go off or phones go flat on the desk. Oh, it's buzzing again. <laughs> phones go flat on the desk. And I say, we need to turn and talk and have a face-to-face -face conversation right now. And there are times for that. And there are times for multitasking and back channeling and doing all those other things. And I think that's okay to be direct and talk to students and say, you know what, when you're texting under the table, I know what you're doing, so just put it away, okay? We, if we're direct with students and we ask them to use it in productive ways, we also ask them to um, engage with us and teach us in productive ways, I think then we can really, you know, be smart about it. So I would actually encourage you to answer that question in the back channel. So I'm going to start a poll though, because I want to know how we're going to spend our last uh, 15 minutes or so together. What should we explore more? So about the first four or five people that say, I want to learn more about this, are going to get on the poll. So what do you think? Uh, I think Educreation has got a lot of buzz. Educreation has got a lot of buzz. OK, and we can also talk about other screencasting software as well. Um, what else got a, got a lot of feedback? What are you interested in? What's the back channel? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can talk more about back channeling. We, can, we could use some other tools that um, will allow for back channeling. Um, back channeling is kind of one of those edu blogger techie type terms for saying how can we have a conversation on screen during a lecture or a presentation or a course where the students are able to talk and participate online while instructing is going on or even while other 
students are talking and people might have conversations. For instance, I work um, in a writing group. I have four other teachers that we meet once a week. We use Google Hangout and we talk and we collaborate. They share their work through Google Docs and we're able to comment on those docs. We also have a chat room running on the side, so while one person is talking, we're attentively listening and we're putting comments in on the side, thinking of what our next question is or adding a link to something that's pertinent. So, uh-oh. <laughs> and then things like this happen, and, it, and it's okay because sometimes it's just fun to have fun. All right, so edgy creations, back channeling, what else came up as a possible topic of conversation? Yeah, right here. Uh, Whiteboard-like applications that are not just smartphones, like okay. that I can initiate via my PC. Oh, okay, so like an online whiteboard? Yeah. Gotcha. Online, what's that? Online <laughs> what was that? All right, let's see if there are one or two more other things we'd want to try to explore here in our time in, together. Instant other polling. votes? Instant polling. Instant polling, okay. Uh, All right. Anything else that we'd want to try? How do you turn the cell on? <laughs> How do you turn it off? <clears throat> yeah, it's actually a good point. If you're tired of getting text messages every time one comes through, just text O F F and send. Yep. And it turns off the receiving. You can still well, send stuff. No, no, no. A C K S turns off the receiving. O F F turns it off, and we won't be on it. Right? Uh, I've turned mine off, and I'm still sending stuff. Yeah, what she said. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, knowing, of course, that some of you are on Sully and that some of you are not, um, I'm actually um, going to do this also kind of the old fashioned way. So, just out of curiosity, while those people that are voting on, on Sully, how many people would be interested in finding out a little bit more about screen capture type things with edu creations? Let's just get kind of a general. Sense. So I'm kind of up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Well, it's gotten up to about 20, 25. All right, so I'm just typing that in here. Just I'm not going to send this as a text. I'm just keeping records. So how many people are interested in finding out more about back channeling, other tools that we could use to have a back channel in the classroom? Only about three or four. Okay. Um, how many people would be interested in finding more about online whiteboards and how to use those and save those? Oh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, about twelve. And how many people would be interested then in finding out something more about using instant polls? Okay, I got about two, three, four. Okay, so it looks like uh, we'll start with edu creations and see how much time we have. <laughs> Let me go here. So tell me then, um, and it looks like edu creations getting the most votes on Sally too, so that's great. All right, so tell me then. What are, you, what are you teaching, what are you explaining, what are you doing uh, in class this week? I need an instructor to help me out. I'll call on Steve again if I have to, but... Uh, <laughs> final exam week. What are, what are they, they're doing something for final exam week, right? Study prep, study skills. Study. So study skills? I'm just thinking review skills. Review skills. Review skills. So what's a specific skill you'd be asking your students to do? Citations? MLA style citations? Okay. So depending on how you want to, to set up your, your screencast here, I could see doing a couple different things. So if there's one, one source that I would go to for MLA style citations, um, I know that the Purdue OWL has a great website. Okay? So I'm going to go to the Purdue OWL for MLA citations. Now, what specifically do we want them to know about MLA citations as they're, they're doing all this? A correct example. A correct example. Okay, what else? Citing online sources. How to cite an online, let's, so we'll think about a correct example of an online source, right? Okay, so if I was going to do something like this, I would probably start I get a screen capture of where I wanted to go with this. Um, let's find MLA works cited for electronic sources. All right. Now I know that MLA is uh, now it just says you can't you just put things and say online? Didn't they change that recently? 
Like web. Yeah. Uh, web or something like that. Okay, so let's say I wanted to do a little instructional tutorial right here. So I'm again, I'm gonna snap this picture. Okay, I'm also, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this uh, URL right here. And I'm gonna go back to EduCreations. Okay, so I don't want that one anymore. I'll talk about something I can actually uh, speak <laughs> semi-knowledgeably about. So I'm gonna grab that from my, my library. I go back into my library. I've got the screenshot of the MLA citations. There it is. Now, EduCreations doesn't allow you, I don't think, to paste text, which is a little bit disappointing, but I'll have, I can point it out up there. So, all right. Hey students, this week as you prepare to finish up your final research paper for our final exam, I want you to be um, very attuned to the fact that we need to do proper MLA citations. Now what you can see up here at the top is that I've gone to owl.english.purdue.edu and that is a website that has very comprehensive online guides. For the moment though, I want you to focus specifically on citing web sources. And what you'll notice is that it requires a little bit more information than what we talked about last week with books and journals. You want to make sure, of course, that you tell the medium of the publication as well as the date of access. So you can just put web and the date that you um, found the site. You don't necessarily have to put the entire URL. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause and save that. So I save it and call it MLA for lack of better term. And I'll keep it private for now. Do we have audio up here, Steve? I don't know. Uh, you do, but we need Not an audio board to do it. Okay. So anyway, I've got that. It's saved as a screencast. I can do. I could save it that way. Now, for those that are not using smartphones, you know, so you can see this again, and I would hit play. And if you could hear my voice coming through the iPad. So there's that. The other way that you can do this, if you don't have a laptop or, or a PC or an iPad or something with you, there's a tool. About how big is that file? I honestly don't know offhand. I'm sorry. Another tool that you can use, you don't have to install anything. It's called Screencast Matic. And this is a neat little tool because what it allows you to do, oh, we'll watch this demo real fast, or we'll do this real fast you can go ahead and start recording anything, anywhere. And I have to run the Java plugin, there we go. And again, you can put your materials online, you can source them online, you can um, explain a process, describe something that you want them to do, point to a website, and then you'll be able to record it. While that's loading up, another one that you can actually download and install is called Jing. And Jing is a tool that allows you to do a little bit more sophisticated screencasting in the sense that um, you can set your regions and you can pause and you can save. It has a five minute limit on it, but really that's usually enough time to explain whatever it is that you want to be able to do. So I can pull up, I can pull up job. my, yeah, I did, and it's still not. Yeah, we have a wood burning internet, so. <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, while those tools are coming up, oh, there we go. All right. So again, now I don't have a microphone connected to this particular computer, so it's not going to quite work out the way I want it to. But I can set my set my screen. Say you wanted to narrate something like a process or a, a description of something that you're doing. Um, I can put this right around my slide share, and then I can start recording. And it's going to go ahead and go. All right, and now obviously it's not going to have any audio because I am not connected with a microphone right now, but you can see how I'm clicking through right here. I'm gonna say done, and now I've got my little quick 10 second screencast, and you can see the different types of things that it allows you to do. So screencasting can happen on a variety of platforms with a variety of tools. Um, what's nice then is that it usually um, creates a, a URL so you could go back to um, Selly or wherever you're sending messages out to students and say, here's a screencast on such and such, click, boom. Now I know Flash doesn't play on iPads and iPhones, so you would have to be conscious of that. All right, the second biggest vote getter was 
um, using an online whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Wait, do you have a question? Couple of things, yeah. real quick. One, um, I, I was curious about the uh, education, the stylus. So you were using your finger to, to, to do a lot of the circling and stuff. Have mm -hmm. you played with other styluses and some of the fancier styluses? Because I know some of them can do things like broad brush strokes, little pin strokes. Do you know if education supports that or not? Oh, my guess is that you're limited in the sense of um, what you can do here in terms of just selecting the colors. You could probably use a stylus with it, but I don't think you could do all those. Me personally, when, because um, my husband cares about me, <coughs> and Steve over there, um, because you don't know, I'm Steve's wife. Hi. <laughs> so, so um, but he, he bought me very recently a lovely stylus, and I like using it with my iPad um, to answer questions for students. Actually, he does too. Because if students are sending you a question, you don't have your computer up, but you have your iPad up, and you can write on it with a stylus, and it's sort of like writing with a pen. Yeah. And it, it's much cleaner than if you're trying to write with your finger on that. So thank you, honey, for my stylus. <laughs> and, and second of all, um, I, I can just speak to Jing a little bit, because I've been using Jing for a couple years, and they are making it so that the pro one is disappearing, but the free one will continue no matter what. So, um, and I, what I like about Jing, and I don't know if Educreations has this, is I can do post-fact call-outs. Um, I can say, you know, oh, right there, I can put arrows in, and kind of, instead of just having it be handwritten, I can make it kind of a little bit more formal in my little video, that, that I kind of like. Sorry. Right. Right, let me show you one other thing. Now, I have not played with a whole ton of these, but um, I think many of them work in similar ways. This was one I just found. Um, called Scriblink, and what's neat about these, and I think the features are pretty similar depending on whatever whatever it is you're happening to do, you can go in here, you can add text, um, supposedly you can add text, I think the Java update here needs a, it needs an update, for whatever reason. don't know what's going on. Oh, am I in the name, thank you very much. If I get over here, hopefully, oh, it's not even letting me get over into the actual text. You don't have a name yet. I don't have a name. Let me be. Right. <laughs> See, this is what's fun: is you try out educational technology in front of people, and you realize <laughs> that you have to learn a few things. It's okay. We have a tutor at LCC that uses Scribblink for SIs on oh, good. Friday nights, and um, you log in, and then you can send that URL. To So we have user testimonial that <laughs> says. So I think that those those are interesting collaborative tools. What you'll notice about it is that it also has that, it generates that URL so you can again send out a link or anything like that to people as they're, they're joining it. I'm sure, I think Blackboard, we use Blackboard at CMU, I think it has a program similar to that as well. The other cool thing, and I'm sure if Java was working we'd see this, you can again probably snap screenshots or you could turn on Jing or Screencast-O-Matic and record and talk through and describe a process or whatever it is that you're, you're thinking about. So I know that my time is almost up here with you and um, know that I'll be around um, to casually talk if you want to just play with some of these things and I think I'll be here at lunch and one of the round tables will be set up. Um, even if you don't have a smartphone, I hope that you figured out some ways that you can do some smarter tutoring. Um, using some of these tools, making your work collaborative and open. We didn't get back to the text with me document, and I'm sorry about that, but here's my contact information. You also have it on the labels there, and I thank you for your time, and I hope you have, have a great day at the conference.